Welcome and welcome to Fur, Fins, and Feathers. This is our 85th episode, and today our guest is Destiny Lattimore of North Attleboro, Massachusetts, who recently graduated. Congratulations Thanks. at Bristol Aggie. <laughs> Talk about your experiences at Aggie. Well, Aggie's just an incredible school in general. It's welcoming. It's just, you feel once you walk through the doors and you, after your first year, you feel like you're part of something like a family, kind of. The teachers welcome you. They're always there to help you no matter what, no matter how good your grades are or whether you're a part of clubs or sports. No matter what, they see you all as family. They see you as someone who deserves respect and deserves their time. But even then, you need to also respect them because they're giving you that respect. They want it back. Um, but Aggie's just a wonderful place. It's a big family, isn't it? It's, it's a big, big family. Big family, <laughs> pretty much. One of the oldest agricultural vocational schools in the country. Oh, yeah. We constantly learn about how our school's changing, how it changed from when it first started up. They put up pictures of how our school used to look, and all the, all the time we get to learn about how our school has changed and how our community has changed and how we have helped change our community all the time, all the time. <laughs> now, in the four years that you have been at Aggie, you've seen a lot of changes. You have a new building. Oh, yeah. It, we got to experience watching that building be built as well as help them pick out chairs for the new building, desks for the new building. Um, even when it was still being worked on, we were experiencing walking through it. They'd ask us, hey, uh, is this door frame too big for you guys? Uh, do you think these staircases should be smaller? What do you guys think? This is your building. You guys need a say in it all the time. We even have um, one of the pillars in the ceiling, all of us signed our names on it, so we'd forever be a part of that building. Were you able to stay in that building? Did you have classes in that building? Oh yeah, that building actually became the science building for any and all science classes as well as animal classes. Wow. <laughs> so that, so you, you lived there. Oh yeah, that was pretty much my second home at that point. <laughs> Talk about, and, you, and I have to congratulate you, you just re were the recipient of a scholarship from the Wampanoag Kennel Club that I was honored to present to you <laughs> that night at class night. That was a nice night. Oh yeah, it always is so nice. <laughs> and uh, the Kennel Club was very honored to present that award to you. And uh, you're going on to the University of Maine. Yep. And what are you going to do in Maine? I'm going to be majoring in pre-veterinary science as well as animal sciences in hopes to further my education and become a veterinarian. <laughs> very, very exciting. It's going to be a long path, but it's going to be worth it. And you were well prepared at Aggie. Oh, yeah. Aggie, like as soon as you walk through those doors and you choose your major at the end of freshman year, they prepare you to go into that um, job field that you want to become and you want to go into as soon as you get into that major. They ask you what field you want to go into, what you're interested in. They don't expect an answer right away. They understand you're still young, you're thinking about it, but they look into your interests and they try to push you towards that field that you want and that you're interested into. Did you always have an interest in animals? Oh yeah, I loved them ever since I was small, from little bunnies to even horses. My parents had always brought me around animals and I always knew that I loved them. And when I saw even our dogs being like acting weird, I'd constantly just take care of them and I'd try to help them in whatever way I could. And I just knew that I wanted to become a veterinarian in order to help those animals that I couldn't myself. Do you have pets at home? Oh yeah, I got pretty much a house full of animals at that point. There's five do five cats, two dogs, uh, chinchilla, 
guinea pig, ferrets, everything you can possibly think of, we more than likely have. You've had a zoo. Oh yeah, pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> Talk about how it was. You know, we have people in the audience who are interested, young people, who might be looking at Aggie as a place to continue their on uh, and their high school education. What would you? How would you recommend? Or what would you do to recommend people to uh, learn more about the school? Well, I always suggest if you're ever interested in Aggie, they constantly hold tours. We have our own website. If people go on that website, you can see um, there's a student selection page. If you go on there or the parent one, they offer you a brief description of every single major what the teachers are like, um, what the major is like, what the students do in each major, and that can give you like the briefest glimpse of what we actually do in the school. But in order to actually get the full understanding of what we do, I always suggest going on one of our tours because you get to see hands-on us students grooming the dogs, us students bringing in the cows, us students working on cars, us students making floral arrangements, or us just mowing the lawn, learning how to use leaf blowers. It's just something that, in order to fully understand who Aggie is and the community we are, you have to go see yourself, honestly. Talk about your experiences working with small animals. Well, working with small animals um, at Aggie was always something. It was an up and down because you have to learn from experience, from um, your mistakes because we will make mistakes we all do especially in small animals because we learn everything from how to put an IV in to how to identify even a flu in an animal and we do that with live animals so we constantly have to check on the animals upstairs make sure they're all water fed clean sometimes some of them will get sick and um, the teachers will always put that responsibility of helping them and taking care of them on our hands. They'll be like, okay, so you need to do A, B, and C. We'll stand by you, we'll watch you, we'll help you, but we expect you to do it yourself so that you can understand that this animal is a living, breathing being that you may be responsible for one day. So it's very much an experience that you never forget but at the same time, something you love. And you have been offered a breadth of different types of pets to work with. Oh yeah. <laughs> like I've seen parrots and parakeets and. Oh yeah. We have an Amazon gray and then we have an Amazon bird as well. Um, we have rabbits, bunnies. We used to have chinchillas. Uh, we have mice, rats. Uh, skinks, leopard geckos, we have an assortment of fish. Every year students get to pick what kind of fish we bring into the aquatics room. So it's just something that and you, you get learned about And you learn about all of these species. Oh yeah, we go through it every single term. We, the teachers decide what um, species of animal we're going to learn about and we go in depth, we learn about their history, we learn about their anatomy, we learn about the illnesses they can get, the habitats they live in, um, and treatments they may go through, uh, struggles they go through, stress, uh, how to repair, like with birds, broken wings, how they fly. We learn everything that we need to learn about that animal in order to understand them during that like month of learning about that species. I <laughs> have been able to go through, Mrs. Blanchett took me through and I was watching some of your fellow students grooming, dog grooming. What was that experience like? It's always a fun experience in my opinion to get groomed, like to do grooming. 
you always have to prepare to change into a different pair of clothing because I can guarantee no dog is not going to shake after come out of that bath. Every single dog I have groomed in small has soaked me after coming out of that bath. But it's always fun because you get to play with them and sometimes you get that fun playful dog that while you're brushing them they'll sit and they'll wag and they'll try to like grab the brush from you and play with you but it's just a fun experience because you get to experience that field of putting them in the bath washing them taking them back out putting them on the grooming table blow drying them brushing them trimming their nails and since every dog is different you have to learn oh, this dog doesn't like their nails trimmed this way, so you have to do it another way. Or this dog doesn't like using this brush, so you have to use another brush. All so that you don't stress the dog out to a point where they snap or they get upset. Did you learn about different breeds? Oh yeah, sophomore year I believe it is, you literally, for the first two terms, Miss Blanchett will take you through and she'll quiz you on every single dog breed. And then at the end of term two, she gives you a big test for you to identify 15 different dog breeds from pictures alone. It's very in-depth that you learn about it. You have to learn about their coats, um, their body shape, their body size, um, behavior, everything about them you have to learn. And I'm sure you got to play with some of her prize-winning English Cocker Spaniels. Oh yeah, she loved bringing them in. She actually used to teach us how to groom using them because of how well behaved they were. And we used to love just taking them for walks because they loved playtime. It was always so much fun playing with them. <laughs> now you translated all of this into you have a part-time job. Yes, I do. And what do you do? You work at Petco? Yep. In uh, Attleboro? Yep. And what do you do there? So most of the time, um, I'll be a cashier, but um, when we have too many cashiers, I'll be on the floor, I'll be taking care of the animals. Um, they trust me to identify when the animal is ill, so um, they'll trust me to go put them in the back and take care of them, give them their medicine that they need. Um, treat them um, whenever we have the treatment available, um, clean them, give them the right amount of water, the right amount of food, um, give customers correct information about certain animals, um, and if a customer has a question about their animal and I may have the answer, they trust me to give them that answer. Do you have a favorite breed that you enjoy? Oh, that's a hard one because I, I love all kinds of animals. My favorite has to be, though, I'm a reptile lover to the end. But dogs. Really? Oh, yeah. Reptiles are just something I love. They're special little creatures that I feel like always get Did you work with uh, reptiles at Aggie? I did. I used to love working in the reptile room all the time. <laughs> What is your favorite reptile? My favorite reptile has to be um, boa constrictors. They're always just such an interesting snake. We've had them on the show here, <laughs> and I had them crawling all over me. Oh, yeah. Like, people have so many misconceptions about snakes, but they can be such kind creatures. It's just crazy sometimes. People think they're so dangerous and they're slimy, but they're actually one of the driest reptile you'll ever feel because they don't like being wet unless absolutely necessary. Now you also, have you worked with large animals? I at have. At Aggie? I have indeed. And what, it, what talk about that. <laughs> Well, they actually, um, they used to have you switch whenever you went to large or small. Um, third term, they'd have you switch into the opposite major. So when I was in third term in small, I'd have to go to large. And they'd have you, depending on the teacher, they'd either have you working with the cows or the horses. And it usually rotate every year. And I used to love working with the cows because um, by that time we'd have calves. 
and they were the cutest little creatures in the world. They'd have their own pen, and you'd go in there, and you'd try to clean up after them, and they'd just want to be playing with you, and they'd be giving you all kinds of kisses and nuzzling you, and they were the cutest little creatures ever. But I also loved working with the horses because you'd get to groom them, and you'd get to take them out, and sometimes you'd even get to see them interact with one another, which was always fun because some of them would bond and have that very close connection where if you tried to move one, the other would follow. <laughs> it, was a very, it was very nice working with them. The horse uh, bond is the furthest bond down, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's all the way back there. Lovely horses there. Oh yeah, they're all gorgeous in my opinion. Some of them are very silly, very silly. Have you worked with goats? We sadly don't have any goats, which is very sad. We have sheep and then we have pigs, but we don't have goats. Some lovely pigs. I've met a couple of nice pigs. Oh yeah. We used to have a meal. Right now we have two females, I believe, and they recently got a meal. Um, but the females are the nicest pigs you'll ever meet. They just want butt scratches all day. Butt or head scratches. <laughs> so you've had a wonderful, wonderful four years. Absolutely. Like, it's just a great experience being at Aggie, especially for four years. Have you been exposed to other majors? Yes, actually, uh, freshman year, you get to go through every single major to see which one you're more interested in. They spend about one week every term up until fourth term letting you experience that major. And you just go through them. And that's actually how I learned I wasn't a huge uh, mechanics person or landscaping person because they'd have you working on engines or they'd be quizzing you on plant names, um, or they'd be making you try out making bo uh, bouquets or boutiques. And um, I just, once I got into the small animal major and they have you taking out the bunnies, handling them, trying to flip them, I just knew after, like. That's where you wanted to be. Yep. <laughs> now you'll be going to Maine, to Orono, and you're going to be majoring in veterinary medicine. Yes, I will. <laughs> that is a very intense program, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be a very challenging one, that's for sure, because of everything that it involves, not to mention how competitive it's going to be in the subject alone. But you'll be well prepared. Oh yeah, Aggie prepares you for that. It's constant friendly competition there with in your major, but among other majors as well. They constantly prepare you for that pressure of possible competition. Every year we have something called the Aggie Cup, where every single major competes in a series of events and a series of competitions in order to win the Aggie Cup and we're constantly pinned against each other, but in a way where we won't be forced to fight, but more or less work amongst ourselves and our majors in order to outweigh the others. Like we do a can drive where we focus on bringing in certain foods for to donate to those in need for Thanksgiving. And most of the time that's a competition, but Mostly the majors do it in order to help those in need. And sometimes the school will be like, hey, the person who, the major that brought in the most um, gets a singular, po sorry, singular point um, towards the Aggie Cup. And that point, sometimes the majors will go for, but sometimes we just think about um, how in how much someone may need this food more than us. That's what Aggie always goes towards. But other times we have silly competitions, like during pep rallies, we'll have what's called the next top major, which is when the majors have to come together and they have to think of what will represent their major the best. And whoever puts on the best show gets that big point towards the Aggie Cup. 
<laughs> Who won this year? Um, personally, everyone thinks it should have been small, but the teachers decided it was Agmec because they did um, a little show of their own with a tractor driving around while playing, um, I forget the song, but it was something very fitting. But you were all winners. Oh yeah, we're all considered winners. The teachers always tell us, even though um, someone may be appointed as the winner, you all did great because you all stuck together, you all thought of this together, and you all worked together. You won the scholarship for <laughs> the Wampanoag Kennel Club. The wa I've been a member of the Wampanoag Kennel Club for 42 years, mm -hmm. so I guess I'm considered an old timer. But I've always enjoyed uh, being a club member, and were, I bred Kerry Blue Terriers, and I've had and I've judged junior showmanship for many years, and uh, I it's always been fun. And when we decided, the club decided to present an award, a scholarship, uh, several. Uh, I guess this is going to be the fourth or fifth year, uh, and you were the person that was selected. And I appreciate that greatly because that's going to help a lot with my um, school finances because my family has never been super duper well off. So being able to go to a good college and getting a scholarship in order to help pay for that college, it really did mean a lot. So I. Thank you again. <laughs> but no, uh, we were very, very honored. I was very honored to present that award and to go to be invited to attend the, your uh, ceremony. Yeah, we, we always love because, like, we love our award ceremony because even though not everyone will get an award, we always let everyone know that trying your best is what matters the most. And... Those who get into honor roll and high honors, they put their best foot forward and they always work their hardest. And um, those who get scholarships, it's a way of pretty much saying that you guys did your best and here you go, good job, great for doing your absolute hardest during whenever you could. And it always makes us feel so much better about ourselves when we get that acknowledgement about how hard we've been working throughout the year. And I was very honored to <laughs> present at that award that night. The whole atmosphere that night was like a big celebration. <laughs> and you all congratulated each other and you were all very supportive. So it all boils down to you are all members of a big family. Now, several of you will be going to the University of Maine. Are you going to be majoring in veterinary medicine? I am. I also you are, yep. but are others? Are yep. you going to have some others? Yeah, we actually have three others that I know of who are from my major who are also going into the same major as me in college. You could become a veterinarian, but some. what are some of the other careers that people may pursue that are veterinary related? Well, I know that all three of them are actually going into, um, going into different fields. One of them is going into becoming an aquatics uh, specialist for veterinary sciences. The other one is becoming a teacher for veterinary sciences. And then one of them plans on becoming a um, nutritionist to help out with um, any and all food-based um, subjects for like dogs, cats, and all that. Now, what would you? What is your trajectory? What do you plan? Um, do you want to be a general practitioner? Yeah, I'm hoping to become a general practitioner um, one day, but if I can't reach that goal, then I'll be fine with being a technician. Um, but I am go aiming for a... To become a doctor of veterinary medicine. Yes. <laughs> and it will open 
thousands of opportunities for you. Absolutely. I just, I've always seen that path for me in order to help animals that I've always thought would need that extra bit of help. And help people as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because so many people need their animals. Yeah. Because I always say, when you get an animal, you're not just getting some sort of creature. You're pretty much adding another member to your family. They become pretty much your child. And they forever will have a piece of your heart and be in your heart in a way that a simple creature could never just be. Because they always end up becoming a part of you. Something that you'll forever care about. We need to continue, and I've said this many times on the air here, we need to support schools like Aggie. Absolutely, absolutely. Because Aggie always pushes you to do your best, but they also push you to follow your dreams and to become something more, to become a part of a family, a community of sorts. And they always push you to try new things, and if you have a certain career in mind, they always prepare you for when you graduate. If you want, you could start looking or go right into that field if you feel like it. They always push you to be your best and to do your best. And they'll say that to you no matter um, whether you're new or you're a senior. They'll always tell you that um, you can be you, the best person you're meant to be, you can do what you want as long as it's what you want and who you are. And help others. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the whole point of the can drive at Aggie. They constantly push it and they'll always push us to help others be ourselves, um, do right by yourself and by others. They'll always, always, always push that towards us and tell us that they always hope for when we graduate, we become more caring, more helpful, more hopeful than anything else. And you are an outstanding example of an Aggie grad. Thank you. <laughs> and you show, show us your diploma. Very nice. <laughs> And you grew Destiny, Anastasia, Lattimore, and you graduated in small animal science. Yep. <laughs> Very good. Well, it's been an honor to have you. We worked on this for a few weeks. We did. We but did. we made it. <laughs> and I was, I'm very, very honored. And uh, the only thing is, you're going to have to come back and give us an update. We'd love to have you back. I absolutely will come back if you'll have me. Oh, I would, <laughs> I'd be honored to have you. And a couple of the previous grads have mentioned to me, oh, I'd like to come back again. <laughs> well, thank you very much, and it was an honor to have you. Thank you. And congratulations Kat. again. <laughs> well, thank you for having me, and thank you again. Very good. <laughs> Well, thank you, folks. We've enjoyed being on Fur, Fins, and Feathers, and we'll see you next time.